So in our prior example, we looked at a down converting low pass impedance transformation network. So here let's look at an up converting network. So what we're going to assume is that the impedance that we see looking into the network are up, in this case will be greater than the load impedance. And we're going to note that this is basically the same as the prior network that we looked at, but in reverse. All right. So noting that we're operating in the reverse direction for this one, we can find that the efficiency of the matching network is equal to 1 minus Q network over Q sub L divided by 1 plus Q network over Q sub C. Again, noting that Q sub L is typically much lower than Q sub C, the approximate efficiency for this network would be Q sub L minus Q network divided by Q sub L. Now we'll further note that we can do the same calculations for a high pass network. And in our high pass network, we can be going in the direction from left to right, which would be a high pass impedance uh, increasing network, or we can be going from right to left, which would be a high pass impedance decreasing network. The efficiency for the left to right direction is equal to 1 minus Q network divided by QC over 1 plus Q network divided by QL. And in the right to left direction, the efficiency is 1 minus Q network over Q sub L divided by 1 plus Q network over Q sub L. Now we note that we can actually cascade more than one section, uh, and this is actually how we did some of our earlier matching networks. And if we do this, we can just treat this as the product of individual L matching networks. So here we have a chain of an L match 1, L match 2, all the way out to L match N. And the total efficiency would just be the product of the efficiencies of all of the individual networks. So here we have eta total is equal to eta 1 times eta 2 times eta 3 times eta N. Or more generally, we can just write this as the total efficiency is equal to the product from i equals 1 to n of eta sub i. Now with most power amplifiers, we tend to want to favor that low pass down converting transformation network. And the reason is that we typically like to be able to filter higher order harmonics using the low pass shape of the network. And we typically need a down conversion from 50 ohms to a lower impedance for CMOS power amplifiers. So let's do one more example. We'll assume a differential class B amplifier outputs a half a watt using a supply voltage of two volts. So using a two element matching network and assuming that the inductor quality factor is 20 and the capacitor quality factor is 50, what would be the total efficiency in the network? And for the time being, we're going to ignore current division and knee voltage. So we know from our prior example of a class A amplifier that R opt is equal to BDD squared over 2 times P out. And this is also true for a class B power amplifier. This means that our optimum termination resistance is 4 ohms. And this would be for a single ended power amplifier. We noted that we're designing a differential power amplifier and the Differential impedance is equal to four times the single-ended impedance. Or in other words, the differential impedance should be 16 ohms. So we can find our network quality factor as we did before. The square root of 50 divided by 16 minus 1, which is approximately equal to the square root of 2. And we note that we're probably going to want to use a low pass down converting impedance match. We know that our efficiency had a form that we learned earlier. The form for efficiency was 1 minus Q network divided by QC, quantity divided by 1 plus Q network divided by Q sub L. 
and in this case the efficiency is about 93 percent. So our total efficiency is the efficiency of the topology times the network efficiency. In other words, it's equal to eta class B times eta network. This is equal to 78.5 percent times 93 percent or a total of about 73 percent. This isn't too bad, but let's note that if we had done this with a single ended amplifier, in other words, we needed a 4 ohm impedance, that the efficiency would have been about 62.5%. So if we had done this with a single ended amplifier, we would have lost almost 10% right off the bat, just due to losses in the matching network. And we'll note that this is still somewhat optimistic, as we haven't included the impact of current division due to finite transistor impedance or knee voltage. So we're going to stop there for today and next time we're going to start to look at amplifier stability.